All right. So here we go. This is Kerry Sullivan with another How to Kick Ass at Sales.com interview. And today I'm coming at you guys with my main man, Tim Tarango, who I've known for uh, about a year now. And we've actually done some webinars together as well, talking about NLP and how to use that in sales. And he is a way big time, huge NLP expert. And he's had a lot of experience in sales and he's used the NLP in sales as well. He has a website out there called rapidnlp.com. You can go check that out there. But with that, I welcome Tim Tarango to the call because he's got ton, or the video, I should say, because he's got a ton of awesome info that he's going to be able to share with you all and help you out here. Right on. I'm happy to be here. Okay. All right. So we start off every interview with the rapid fire round. These are quick okay. questions coming at you. So what's your favorite color? Blue. What's your favorite food? Oh, good one. You know what? I have eggs almost every day, so scrambled eggs is a consistent winner for me. Okay. Uh, favorite sports team? Los Angeles Dodgers. Favorite book? The Alchemist. Uh, favorite place you visited? Buenos Aires, Argentina. And favorite season of the year? Uh, well, I live in California, and I'm in San Diego now, so it's like temperate climate all year round, but I'll have to go with summer. Summer's a, summer's a winner. All right, and who's your favorite superhero? My favorite what? Superhero. Favorite superhero. Well, th since you asked me my favorite sports team, my favorite superhero would be Kirk Gibson from the 1990, 1988 Los Angeles Dodgers because he hit a game-winning home run in the World Series. I know that wasn't the answer that you were looking for, but that's... Hey. That's the winner. That's a good one. I should just maybe go with uh, who's your favorite hero on that question. Right. Well, I mean, you know, if you asked our buddy Tom Knutson, he would list probably 100 superheroes and, and talk about that for an hour. But Exactly. He's like, ah, I don't know. I should have him on one of these. Yeah. And then uh, lastly, what's your favorite movie? Oh, man, these are good questions. Favorite movie? I'll go with the movie I've seen the most, which is Dumb and Dumber. I've probably seen that movie a hundred times. I think it's so funny. Tommy Boy is a close second. I like comedies. Good, good, right on, right on. All right, well then, with that, Seabass, we will kick in <laughs> the rest of the, the the meat here, as they say. So, you know, I know you got into sales at, uh, at a pretty young age, so why don't you just tell everybody how you exactly got into sales? Oh man, I think, you know, some people choose a profession. I really feel like my profession, if you want to call it that, chose me because I am an entrepreneur down to the core. I mean, I was selling gumballs at family reunions when I was five years old. I had a bookmark company when I was six and I sold my grandma. I think she, she was my only client. I sold my grandma bookmarks for like 25 cents. You know, when we had, when we had fundraisers for Little League, I was always selling the most chocolate bars. I was always selling something. And so one of my uh, first jobs was selling, uh, actually soliciting donations for the university that I attended, USC. And so I was the annoying guy that called alumni and asked for donations. And you know what? I got really good at selling over the phone. Uh, it was like I would watch the movie Boiler Room, and I actually tweaked some of those lines, and it did really well. And that was a, a job that I did very well at. Before that, I sold sporting goods equipment. Uh, when I was 16 years old at Chick Sporting Goods in Upland, California. And then after that, I went on to a little higher stakes. I sold multi-million dollar apartment buildings after I graduated from college at Marks and Chap, which is an investment real estate company. Right on, right on. So why don't you just tell people what NLP is? Because the other day I was talking about it on a, a Blab or Periscope or something like that. And so I was like, oh, is that is that mind control? So why don't you just talk a little bit about what it is exactly? Sure. So NLP stands for Neuro Linguistic Programming, and the best definition that I prefer for it, it's a collection of tools and techniques to help you get the types of results that you want. So by, by results, I mean effective communication with someone one-on-one, -on -one, effective communication over the phone, and really there's this idea of effective communication with yourself. So really being able to communicate between your conscious and your subconscious mind. And so what that allows you to do is it allows you to be more influential, more persuasive, whether you're selling in person, over the phone, on a big webinar. It also allows you to be more influential with yourself to help improve your motivation or improve your confidence or to pick yourself up when you're not feeling so hot. There's a lot of different uses for it. 
Um, but my, my definition is really this, this collection of tools, this collection of techniques that you can use at your disposal at, at uh, any given time. Really. Okay, great. And so what are some of the ways that salespeople can actually use certain NLP tactics? Wow, there's so many. So just to put in perspective, uh, Tillman Knudsen, yourself, and, and me, we all did a, a, a training on this called the Neuro Linguistic Selling System. And I think we talked for, what, three hours, four hours? I think it was four. Yeah, on all the different NLP techniques that you can use in specific spots during, that, during the sales cycle. Yeah. And we, we came up with 37, something like that, techniques. So throughout the entire process, really can. So if we break down the sales process from the very beginning, you can use NLP and the techniques to to build rapport very, very quickly. And so that's a whole thing that we talk about. Um, if you wanna talk about the influence persuasion side, there's embedded commands and, and pacing and leading um, th throughout the entire sales process. There's so much that you can use. Yeah, so why don't you just give some examples of how effective it can be if you use it well. Okay, so when I was selling apartment buildings, so these were $2 million uh, complexes and it's a that's a very complex sale and I was actually able even at the age of about 22 so I was, I was working in this commercial real estate company and there were agents in the office that had more experience working in that office than I had years on the planet right they'd been working there for 20 plus years I was 20 something years old and basically they were crushing me I got decimated I just got my butt kicked left and right I would go on these appointments and I don't know what the owner was thinking when they saw a 20-something-year-old kid and then another agent that's you know, very well established in that market. I just couldn't compete. And so I really needed to learn NLP just to have a level playing field. And it turns out I actually got a lot better than some of my competition, the other agents in the office, because I was using these techniques. One that a quick story is I had a, a mentor that I'd go on meetings with, and he was um, – he had – four or five years of experience. So not a ton of experience, but obviously a lot more than me at the time. And he would go into the meeting. It didn't matter if we were talking to, you know, a young, energetic businessman or a tiny, you know, 70 year old woman, he would approach every conversation the exact same. And that actually destroyed rapport because we would be with this elderly couple talking about this apartment that had been in their family for 50 years or so. And he was, all right, here's what we're going to do. Let's go. This is what you want to do. This is where the market's going. You got to sell. Let's do this. And the energy was just way too high for this example. And were those types of meetings, we just, we did not sign a deal. We could never get any traction with that type of clientele. Whereas the young hustler we did great with. And then I started to use NLP and matching and mirroring to build rapport instantly. And so one of the things is called, well, matching and mirroring, one of the things that you can do is just pace the energy, pace their vibe. You can match their facial expressions, their tonality, the specific words that they're using. And when you do that right from the get-go, it's like you've known them for years. And that does, it's like they're your best friend. And that does go so far in building rapport and having that connection. And obviously, you have to have that if you're going to, to close a deal that's, you know, any substantial, any substantial type of deal. Yeah, right on, right on. Okay, so what are some of the biggest mistakes you think that salespeople make out there? Biggest mistakes that salespeople make are really not listening to their prospects mm -hmm. and not fine-tuning their, their approach for each specific prospect. So for example, and that's, that's clear for the one-on-one -on -one sale, but to give you a, a recent example of something I'm doing now is I have a partner here in San Diego that uh, has a, a real estate radio and TV show, and we're creating a product for it. And we, uh, we just did a webinar last week, and based on the actions that the, the participants took, we are talking to each person a little differently. So for example, if someone has attended the webinar, we talk to them as someone that attended the webinar. If someone registered for, for the event but didn't attend, we talk to that group differently than the group that attended. Mm -hmm. uh, for the group that didn't, didn't register and didn't attend, we talk to that group differently. And so as people are making the transition from speaking to different types of people, different personalities, different energy levels, different backgrounds and experiences versus, you know, and, and translating that to online, you really have to listen to your prospect and tailor your approach to what it is, to their specific needs and wants and aspirations. Gotcha, yeah, right on. So what are some of your favorite NLP tactics that you use every single time you're, you're doing sales? 
One of my favorites, I actually call it the master key method. And it's this approach that allows you to, to fine tune and with like a, a surgeon's scalpel, find out exactly what your prospect needs and wants and deliver it in a way that they're like, wow, I can't believe I finally found someone that speaks my language. I finally found someone that is giving me exactly what I want. So you want to go through that real quick? Yeah, do it. Go for it. Yeah, I mean, we went through it in a lot of depth. It actually combines a few different NLP techniques. Uh, in fact, we did the uh, example with you and your triathlon. Your triathlon. Yeah. Um, but let's talk about if um, if you had to buy a new computer, and I was selling you a computer. Now I don't sell computers, uh, but this is how the master key method would work. I'll, I'll give you the, the general outline for the people watching. Yeah. The first is I'm going to do a very quick value solicitation, and I'm going to find out what's important to you. Right. So instead of trying to sell you on this computer looks the fanciest, this one has the highest processor speed, this one will allow you to do graphics or be a gamer and try to guess what's important to you, I'm just going to come out and ask. Mm -hmm. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to find out the specific words and phrases that you're using. And in, in fact, I have this fancy yellow pad. I'm just going to write them down. And I do this with clients one on one. I do it over the phone. Um, you know, I'm not ashamed or I don't try to hide the fact that I'm, I'm being very precise and detailed. So here's what that might sound like. So Carrie, as you are buying this computer, yeah. um, tell me what's important to you as you purchase a, a new computer? Uh, it's going to have a really good screen. It's good screen? Yep, okay. good screen. It's got to be really fast. Uh, it's got to be light and thin. Okay. Light and thin. All right, what else is important to you about this new computer? Um, it's got to work really well for all the stuff I use it for. What kind of stuff do you use it for? Uh, well, you know, pretty much everything is done with on the cloud, so it's going to be super fast online, and you know, maybe a little bit of video editing in there too. Okay, cool. So I do that on the cloud now too. <laughs> all right, great. So, really simple question, right? What's important to you? That's what's called an NLP of value solicitation. Um, I know, in fact, uh, good friends of mine who, who run a very successful multi-million dollar business, they created an entire product about this, this value solicitation just for relationships. That's how important it is. So it's, it's great for relationships. It's obviously great for, sell, for selling. So the first thing to notice is all the things that you didn't mention, right? You didn't mention, um, you didn't mention anything about a workstation. You didn't mention anything about complex spreadsheets or... Uh, being a gamer or needing to set up something like that, you were pretty precise, pretty clear. So if I were looking to sell you this computer, I would basically feed you back the exact words and phrases that you're looking for. So I might say something like, um, Carrie, that's great. I think I have something that you'd be really interested in. This model here, well, obviously you can tell it has a really good, it has a really good screen, right? So, um, you know, nowadays you can do almost everything online. So this computer is not just fast. This thing, when it comes to cloud, computing, anything online, this thing is super fast. Obviously, it's light and thin, and um, you know, it'll allow you to do video editing. It's really good at video edit editing, uh, but one thing that you'll notice is it's, really, it's super fast. Okay, so nothing complex there. I just fed you back the language yeah. that you used to me, and no one else can pick up on this except for you, uh, but I'm willing to bet that that sounded like a good computer to you, right? Yeah. Even though it's... We didn't go into any details at all, but I'm giving you your word choices right back to you. Yeah. That's why I call it the master key. It's like having the master key that opens any, any lock. Right on, right on. Well, that is great. So in terms of, um, you know, a lot of people are like, okay, NLP, there's a lot of things that you can do. And like, you know, a lot of people went through our webinar and they're like, oh my yeah. God, this is really complicated, right? So what is something that people can do right away, start using, and get instant results? Start using right away, instant results. Okay. So here's a, here's a quick technique. It's called a state elicitation. Uh, most people, when they get on, um, well, watch how professional athletes prepare for an event. Watch how the best salespeople pr uh, prepare for a meeting or a phone call. One of the things that you don't see them is they're not slouched in their chair like this. I don't know if you can hear me anymore. Um, they're not quiet. Like right now, I feel sluggish and slow, and like if I stood, if I stayed this way, I could feel even a little depressed. So notice how you're sitting. I model you and sit up. I'm using my my ab muscles to hold myself up. 
take a deep breath, and just changing your physiology will change your mindset. So you can change your mindset to change your physiology. You can change your physiology to change your mindset. That happens instantly. Um, another, to walk you through the state elicitation exercise, this is, again, something else that we did on the training. Um, I would do one for confidence. Confidence before every single sales call, confidence before every meeting. It sounds like this. Um, Carrie, can you remember a time when you felt incredibly confident? I can. Okay, can you remember a specific time? Yes. Okay, great. So here's what I want you to do. I want you to think back to that time. You can leave your eyes open, you can close them your choice. I want you to go back to that time in your mind's eye, see what you saw, hear what you heard, and feel the feelings of being totally 100% confident. So go back to that time, see what you saw, hear what you heard, and really feel the feelings of being totally 100% confident. Notice how your breathing has changed. Notice how you're feeling. Notice how your physiology is a little different. Great, now come back now. All right, how do you feel? Confident. Yeah, you feel more confident. And that, that's an exercise that took, what, 30, 30 seconds a minute? Yeah. And it's just as effective going through that process on your own. Just going back and imagining a time when you felt confident. And the common question is, well, what if I can't remember a specific time? Or, you know, I've never been confident. Well, what would your, you asked the question about superhero, what would your superhero do uh, if, if he or she needed to feel confident? How would they hold their body? How would they breathe? How would they stand? Model that and imagine what it would feel like to be confident. If you can't think of a time, imagine what that might feel like. And you'll notice that you put yourself in that state instantly and that really dictates everything that follows after that in the sales conversation. Because when your clients see that you're confident in how you're presenting yourself and how you're showing up on the, the appointment or the phone call or the meeting, it uh, goes so much more effectively. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Um, so one of the other things is that in sales, you, you have a lot of failure. It's probably a job out there that you get more failure and you got to get your head kicked in more than most, right? Absolutely. So, you know, and that's another big part of NLP and, and using that and keeping your head in the game. So we're talking a little bit about, you know, getting that state and everything like that. So what are some effective ways that people can bounce back fast from failure? Yeah, great, great question. And as a salesperson, you do, you get your butt kicked over and over again until you really fine tune this stuff. Um, the, the best technique from an NLP perspective that I use for that is what's called a reframe. And a reframe is just looking at a situation from a different lens or a different perspective. So the way you reframe something is you ask the question, what else could this mean? That's it, what else could this mean? So it's not that you failed or you got an appointment and you didn't close a deal, it's what else could this mean? So the way I would answer that, after going on a presentation that didn't convert, I would say, well this means that I have a higher chance of converting the next one. This means I got one of the failures out of the way, uh, I'm on the right path to the next one. Um, for example, when I was selling commercial real estate, the way I prospected for business was dial for dollars. I was cold calling uh, apartment owners, building owners, and I was competing with everyone in the, in the office. I mean, they might get a, a phone call four or five times per day. And inevitably, you make enough calls, you get people that get really pissed off, and I've had people curse me out. And so what I started to do is I started to keep a tally of how many times I would get yelled at throughout the week, and my goal was to get more people to yell at me. Now, of course, I didn't actually want people to yell at me, but what it did is it emphasized that when that did happen, instead of feeling down or depressed, it was like, all right, I got another one. I'm doing something right. I'm on the right path. So I totally reframed that entire situation and, and actually made it work for me. Right on. That's great. Um, okay. Uh, so let me ask you this. Let's say you're homeless. All of a sudden, you're homeless. What are you going to do? Homeless. Yeah, you're homeless. Okay. What's, gonna, what's your tactic to get back on track? Okay. Well, the first thing I would do is I would clean myself up as best as possible and make sure that I look like a million bucks. Because the fact that I have a home or don't have a home, if there's probably no way that my prospect that I'm talking to knows that. And so I, I would look like a million bucks and I would present myself like I had a $20 million mansion. That's how I'd come across. That's how it'd sound. And that's how I approach prospects. If I didn't have any money and I need to create money from scratch, I would, that's a really good question. Um, let me think about that for a second. You get time, it's all good. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So I would, um, I would go to a, an up and coming business that's doing that they had sales and they had, 
they had salespeople working for them. And so they had a proven product, a proven system. And I would just go in there and I would, I would find out what the top salespeople are doing, make a few tweaks and out hustle them. And then what I would do after that is probably write a book and talk about how I went from being homeless to being a number one agent after that and, and make everything work for me. You were kind of homeless last year. You're nomadic going all over the place. I was nomadic for about two years. Yeah. So I actually was, I didn't have a home, but I felt very home full because I stayed, I traveled throughout the world and yeah. nowadays with Airbnbs and hotels and friends room, I had plenty of places to stay, but yeah. He was the, he was living the ultimate internet entrepreneur lifestyle. It was, it was so, it was such a cliche living out of a backpack, money coming in while you sleep, working from a laptop. It was very cliche, but it was, it was awesome. Yeah, actually, let's talk about that. How did you make that transition from doing real estate into getting to that point where you're able to do that? Sure. Well, I actually had the idea when I was selling commercial real estate, not nothing specific, but I had this wanderlust. I really wanted to go explore and see the world. And when I was selling real estate, obviously, I was really limited to my local market, my local geography. And so really since college, I wanted a position where I could do something online and travel and make money. So I've had the idea for a long time. Then when the market, the real estate market uh, went to crap 2008, 2009, I actually quit on April 1st, 2009. So April Fool's Day, yeah. which is funny because I told people that it was, my, it was my last day and nobody believed me, of course. And a couple months later, I found myself on the beach in Brazil and I thought, this is awesome. I could keep doing this for a long time if I had you know, steady income coming in. Yeah. And then it was just going to work reading everything I could, listening to every podcast I could, downloading, purchasing trainings and courses, and figuring out how to, how to do it. And there's a lot of specifics that we can go into that. But I, but I really started with having the vision in my head of what I, where I wanted to get to, and then working backward from there. Right on, right on. And then did you discover NLP before or after going into the internet lifestyle? Before, so I started using NLP when I was selling commercial real estate. Right. And one of the first, so I, I got off to a good start just because I was hustling and I was, uh, won the Paysetter Award, which is kind of like the Rookie of the Year Award. Right. And then after that, I got a little too confident, uh, a little too cocky, I should say, and I didn't close a deal for about nine months. So I went from having a good start to making zero, zero dollars in nine months and feeling lost and clueless and, you know, still spending money on marketing, still spending money on driving around town to look at these places. And I was crushed and I started reading books by Tony Robbins and books on sales and books on persuasion and influence and marketing. And everything kind of led back to NLP. So I said, all right, well, I'm just gonna go to the source and start learning this material that's everybody's citing. And I started using it. And the first technique I remember using uh, helped me close a deal. In fact, it was a difference between closing a deal and not closing a deal. And that client ended up being worth $82,000 in commission to me in a few months. And I was like, okay, there's something to this whole NLP thing. Yeah, yeah, right on, right on. Cool. What do you think the future is of sales? Where do you see it going? The future is of sales. That's a really cool question. Well, obviously, a lot of the selling that I do is online and automated. You know, if you think back 20 years ago, someone would walk into onto a car dealership and really legitimately not know what car they were going to buy. And they would want the salesperson's input and, and want to know the features and benefits. Um, now someone walks in the car lot and they've done all the price shopping, they've done all the research, they know exactly what they want. It's a different, it's a different game. So I think where selling is going to, to uh, transition to now is really capitalizing on the no like trust factor and automating that through online sources. Like this podcast, like the videos that you do, we talked about Periscope a bit before this call. Yeah. Uh, I, think, I think that's gonna be huge in, in every selling cycle is having that distribution of what I call the no like trust factor and, and automating that. So someone before they talk to you one on one, they basically already have in their mind in, in their mind that they want to conduct business with you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right on. Cool, man. Well, that's all the questions I have. Tim, where can people find your stuff? All right, so rapidnlp.com is the, the main website. Um, but if you want to check out this presentation, this this entire training that you and I did, mm -hmm. which is I think three or four hours long, I basically give up all the secrets that I have uh, for using NLP in sales, and that's NLP in what I would consider a simple sale under 100 bucks, all the way up to positioning yourself to close multi-million dollar deals. And if you go to rapidnlp.com forward slash 
sales, rapidnlp.com forward slash sales. That'll direct you to um, the training that, that you and I did where we talk all about that and you can pick up a copy of that. Um, I have the Learn NLP at Home course, which is a complete NLP at home study course, and you can find all that stuff at rapidnlp.com. Right on, right on. Yeah, the, uh, the whole sales webinar that we did, it's got a ton of killer information in there for sure, and if you use it, it'll work. So mm -hmm. we, didn't, uh, we didn't hold anything back on that. We went for a long time. Yeah, yeah, it's a good solid four hours of, uh, and, all, and tons of handouts and stuff. So yeah. um, awesome stuff. Is there anything else you'd like to add? Um, Let's see. I think that's about it. I'm, I'm digging the videos that you're putting out. Um, I really like what you're doing for the sales community. I wish there were more resources like that 10 years ago when I was getting my butt kicked in sales. And there, you know, there weren't podcasts. There weren't these every daily videos. Yeah. There wasn't Periscope to really um, get clear on that. So this, you know, the people that are watching your stuff, they have such a huge competition, uh, excuse, a huge edge over their competition. Yeah. Uh, you know, keep keep watching, keep learning from Carrie because this guy's the man. Um, that's and what Tim. I said. And Tim, keep learning from Tim too. So right. that's it. All right, guys. Well, this is Carrie Sullivan with another How to Kick Ass in Sales .com interview. I will see you guys on the next video. Over and out. Thanks, Tim. All right, you got it, man.